All right. Um, good morning. My name is Jamil Paulin. I'm an assistant art professor at Colorado College, uh, speaking to Maxan Dani, a Haitian artist who is uh, whose work is featured in the um, current exhibition at the Fine Arts Center um, called Cross Currents, Breathe into the Past. Um, I'm going to uh, begin with a brief bio of Mr. Dani and his work. Um, then we'll transition into a uh, um, short introduction of the work by uh, Mr. Dani and uh, followed by a conversation between the two of us. Maxan Dani is nomadic as long as his images remain immobile. His films and photographs, uh, he films and photographs the silence of landscapes, the energy of dancers, the aesthetics of performers, the testimonies of anonymous people he meets, he met in Haiti, where he was born, Cuba, South Africa, and Senegal. These images come to life during performances that can last two hours or two nights when he delivers from his computers video montages made from his photos, recomposed, saturated, and modified by effects of fluidity, texture, and matter, as much as, much as by, the, by ethnic symbols, rituals, or words. The creation takes shape in the sensory experience of the spectator who enters the visual and sound space of the work. Trained in audio, audio visual reporting in Paris, and then director, editor for French television stations for 15 years, it is with the alternative techno rave scene in the 1990s that Maxan Dani develops as a precursor his visual experience, experiments. The work is collective and the experimentation permanent. The level uh, tends towards fusion when the mix between music, images, and public is found to work to be in phase. But the musical chaos of the techno nation is running out of steam. And at the dawn of the new millennium, Maxan Dani seizes the opportunity op offered by the African Africa American Foundation to realize a personal exhibition in Canada. Um, thank you, Mr. Dani, for um, offering your time today um, and for offering your work to the CC community. Um, I've uh, had a chance to see some of your work and it's uh, you know beautiful, challenging, multi-layered. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, hearing more um, of your perspective on your work. Thank you, Jamil. Uh, I can I can call you Jamil, <laughs> Jamil, and you can you can call me Maxence also. And uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm very happy to be with you for this conversation. So I, I was hoping uh, that you could uh, share your screen and uh, talk through the work that's up in the uh, Fine Arts Center um, in the Cross Current show, and uh, maybe walk us through some of the experiences that inspired you to make the work, um, maybe some of the, the creative processes or the creative journey that, uh, you know, yielded the work um, to sort of open this, uh, this dialogue. In 2020, uh, I had the invitation of uh, um, curator Julian Sanchez to make a, an exhibition for the festival of video art in Nice uh, that um, they, they call the uh, Objectif Video Nice. And uh, it's an important festival where there's a lot of video artists of the world presenting their world, their work. And um, the, at the beginning, uh, the curator um, asked me to explore my inner world. So I think uh, I had to, um, I wanted to explore the, 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 my dreams, uh, my dreams, uh, but uh, not uh, the dreams like everything, it's beautiful and, um, 
the 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 dream we can have in a real uh, in um, when when you are awake but the the real dreams uh, in a Freudian sense uh, when uh, you explore um your fantasy but uh, your engagement uh, um everything uh, that can cause a trauma because uh, um, when you are sleeping, your dream is the, the way to to express and to to uh, liberate uh, the your trauma or your frustrations. So um, I really explore uh, my dreams uh, in all the ways, uh, and um, you know uh, a bit of the situation in Haiti. Um, now and for more than one, more really more than one year, uh, because um, um, since 2018 we are in a, in a growing uh, mm, bad situation, and um, this can cause sometimes nightmares uh, because um, when you are really um, care about your country or about uh, everything that's happened in the country, um, sometimes um, I can't work because I'm focused on the news and always seeing what happened in Haiti. So I... Uh, um, Sometimes I really have dreams about what happened and and uh, what happened there. It's a very, very dramatic situations with uh, the gangs, uh, with um, the, the crimes, uh, the politics and the corruption, uh, what give the situation what we have now. And um, I wanted to explore to the, the fantasy of uh, the. This is a, always a theme of in my work also, but uh, in my dreams, uh, I'm. I can. Uh, when you talk about dreams, you have fantasy, the sexual fantasy, and um, the. Um, so I I explore the erotism with uh, with the men. Um, we I show in the in the film. Um, so you see you see this uh, this guy is a naked guy uh, that um, uh, with uh, another um, supporting another another guy um, naked too that I, I make uh, the, um, the shoot of the video in, uh, in uh, space, an empty space. Uh, um, mm. So this, uh, all those aesthetic is a mix between imagination and real dreams uh, and adaptation of my dreams. Uh, and uh, um to finish i have also not to finish because there is a lot of things in the film i have also uh, the voodoo um, um the voodoo scenes uh, the voodoo ceremony in my dreams because uh, um because uh, this is something uh, strong for me uh, also when i have some dreams uh, of um the the spirits uh, or things that is um, connected uh, with um, um, the voodoo. Yeah. Um. And like to. Do you do you record your dreams in a dream journal? Um. Or do you uh do you like? Because I'm because thinking about um. You know, making this work around dreams is is reminding me of some of the French surrealists, and you know how some of them would have these techniques of like keeping a a notepad as they you know next to their uh, bed on a nightstand, or um, 
you know, having this uh, sketchbook as they lay down and take a nap so that they could record their notes. Um, do you do you use techniques like that to record your dreams or do you just sort of reflect on them when you wake up and then uh, maybe sketch out um, a treatment that you uh, would want to film? Uh, I write them. Uh, yes, I'm, I them and I have a question between uh, what I do and what is a re reproduction I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> pods connected to my head to, to take exactly my dreams. So I have to make a reconstitution of uh, real dreams uh, and what can uh, be uh, an, ad an adaptation of uh, my fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. But I write a lot of dreams, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um and I know um on on your website you're talking about different forms of dreams, like uh and, and you touched on that a little uh um briefly. Um like you have the, the dreams of, of fantasy. Um but then I think at, at one point you were also mentioning um there's a there's sort of a, a, a Haitian perspective on dreams where like some of them could be like spiritual messages or like messages from ancestors. Um and I'm and I'm wondering like do are those are those different types of dreams um sort of distinct? Like do you have recurring dreams that are that are more fantastical or recurring dreams that feel like a like a message from from uh another realm um or do, do your dreams kind of blend where like they they're sometimes fantastical sometimes nightmarish um sometimes you know like a like a spiritual lesson all in one um mm -hmm. um i think uh, when i dream uh it's separate when because uh, when you are when you when i wake up uh, in the morning, uh, and if it's a spiritual dream, so you feel it. <laughs> you, yeah. you feel yourself uh, another way. You you feel you you had a message. You when you remember the dream, you have another feelings uh, in your body, in your mind, and you know when it's uh, just uh, uh, just a dream, just uh, free expression dreams, uh, trauma dreams. Uh, uh, or if it's a spirit uh, dream, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's in the feelings. Um, of course, uh, we are talking about dreams, so uh, anything it's uh, is logical. Uh, you don't have uh, things uh, very very clear. And I think uh, in Vodou, uh, depending of your degree uh, in level uh, in the in your initiation, uh, you can have. Uh, um very clear um the dreams are very clear or not one day i asked to um uh, new initiate uh, that uh, what is the difference because uh, uh between uh, before and after and he say uh, uh before i had just dreams like this i didn't it was um, Blur, I don't understand, but now it's like if you see the your dream in 4K. <laughs> yeah, everything is very clear, and the message also is clear. Yeah. So I'm not uh, in this level, unfortunately, and I hope I will be in this level one day, um, because I have an initiation very slowly and adapted to myself, and. Um, uh, that is uh, uh, initiation for me, I know. And uh, so I don't accelerate anything, but uh, uh, this is a good example and a good uh, way to see uh, what uh, what can be the spiritual dreams uh, in Vodou. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Next man. <laughs> yeah. And so 
take taking taking that question up um in voodoo are there particular loa that are associated with dreams um that, so i i know the, the the last time we spoke i i told you that my grandfather is haitian so i've been um trying to uh to study um some haitian creole and some uh some voodoo um to inform my visual artwork um and so far, like I've I've learned a little bit about like the Rada and the Petra Loa, um, but are there different Loa that are particularly associated with dreams? No, I don't have. I don't. I don't think so. Um, each uh, each person, uh, each initiate uh, has to know in. Um, uh, in a point of his uh, initiation, what is uh, the spirit that walk with uh, with him, and this uh, this spirit can uh, give uh, the the message in in, um, in the dreams. Um, we can also have a, a mix of uh, spirits. Uh, um, that gives you a message, um, but I don't know. You don't have a um, special, special spirits that that uh, give you dreams, because this is uh, the big um, mm, um, I don't I won't say reason, but this is this is the big. Um, the big things of the voodoo it's uh, to communicate so um you can say you have a dream if in your this when you are um sorry for my english hmm. when you are in deep sleep sometimes you can have just sometimes of some kind of dreams and sometimes you have a uh some dreams when you are awake also mm -hmm. yeah and some sort of people who do initiate can can provoke the the dreams uh, um, in a state of when they are awake yeah yeah okay that makes sense. Um, at, at this point, I'm uh, interested in sort of pivoting from the from the conversation we've been having on dreams to talk more about the the sort of formal things that are uh, happening in your work and the role that technology um, plays in this. Um, and to I guess to maybe bridge those two you know the the dreams and the voodoo with the the technology and the and the aesthetic um i noticed that you have an inkisi um on your shelf behind you um or a, a power figure behind you uh, next to that plant and um and i'm i'm interested in so so one something that i've been uh researching the last couple of years is um how indigenous African societies often uh, integrated science and technology with, uh, you know, spirituality or or mythology, right? Um, so, um, I was reading a reading a book called Blacks in Science, and there and one of the chapters was making the case that um, metallurgy or you know manipulating metals in uh in ancient or pre in pre-colonial West Africa was seen as a as a spiritual form of alchemy and you had to be initiated into that trade um as well as being in, in initiated into the the into a, a spiritual vocation or a religious vocation. Um and so thinking about how you're using the camera um something that's usually associated with the kind of realism to create this surreal dream space that's also influenced by Vodun. Um, I'm interested in, 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 in uh, how you make sense of, of technology 
and and the kind of work that using a a technological device does um particularly when i think about what we do with uh with digital technology you know we're using um we're we're using electrical impulses that are are imp imperceptible to the eye um in order to you know essentially conjure a representation of something that's real um and in that sense like i i see these forms of digital technologies as very much akin to things like a a power figure or um a talisman or amulet um so i was just uh wondering what uh what you thought about using technology in in the way that you do to create this surreal space, this spiritual space. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, it's um, uh, to 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 answer to the, to this question. I have to to make a flashback to how I begin to to make this um, this art. Um, experimental art, uh, I think um, in, um, I, I learned uh, the audiovisual, but uh, I, I think I didn't have the, um, uh, I need something to express myself more than uh, in TV and making uh, um, classical uh, videos, um, um, showing stories uh, from beginning to end. I wanted to express myself in different ways, but um, uh, I didn't know exactly what it was. Uh, so in the 90s, uh, um, the techno music, um, uh, I discovered the techno music and uh, also all form of music, uh, contemporary art, uh, music, contemporary music. Uh, and um, I'm, those musics uh, provoke uh, um, a lot of things in my Im imagination. So I, I begin to exploit um, uh, alone. And after that, I, I um, meet other friends, uh, other, other artists that were in the same uh, movement and the same uh, uh, in the same way they they they, they feel that uh, the techno music uh, um, ask um, provoke images in uh, in their head and they had to express themselves uh, also um, it's like this the visuals uh, the techno visuals uh, uh, yeah. born with the music but um, there is something very important at this point of my life. It's because I, I'm Haitian, but I come from a very classical family where my mother is pianist. And she's, yeah. She plays uh, very, she learned uh, at the beginning in Haiti. After that, uh, she, uh, she made the conservatory in Paris. And uh, so she, she made a concert in uh, a lot of um, countries in the world. Uh, and um, wow. my father uh, also um, is a lover of um, uh, classical music. So I grew up in, um, in this uh, ambience uh, and uh, not in the drums uh, every time. The, the, yeah. the, the voodoo drums, it's something um, that uh, in just in the time in the year you hear a lot of drums and but uh, I didn't know this part of my culture. Yeah. So it's true the techno and this what people call a this moment, the boom, boom, because uh, they, ah, what is this kind of music? Oh, no, I, <laughs> it's not for me, I like. And this, in this music that opened my mind and 
make a certain awareness and i have to say that uh, there were drugs too uh yeah with this music and the drugs uh, um can open your mind too uh, in a certain way it depends on the people uh it's not an apology of drugs but uh, sometimes uh, and some drugs i uh, can um, open your mind and so it's at this time in my life that I interesting uh, in the vodou music, and I each time I'm in uh, in this moment I live in Europe for I live there for seventeen years, but each year, each time I go back in my country and I go in some places to explore and to discover uh, this part of my culture. Uh, so it's uh, this <laughs> back to the source. It's uh, this way I make uh, this um, um, in French they call that cheminement. It's um, a way to to go to to your roots um, and to and um, to know what is. Uh, your tradition and I um, and I begin to understand more and more um, the rhythms uh, that is very very rich and um, I discover the, the tradition the culture the end of the do and um, at um, and when I'm used to work in France with collective to make video installation, uh, a lot of things in experimental way with the techno and um, uh, in 2002 and uh, this it's another time when I say now I want to know um, how I feel that there is something that can really match together. It's the technology and the voodoo tradition. So for some people, it's maybe two opposite things, but for me, it's natural. <laughs> the, um, the technology, uh, the visuals, uh, the, um, um, the drums, uh, and the techno music, uh, all those kind of things, uh, they are all linked for me uh, in very, very naturally. Yeah. So I continue to explore um, this way um, and uh, make a video installation uh, um, that mix um, voodoo tradition. And um, and the electronic um, electronic uh, culture music or um, techniques. It's um, it's uh, like this. I make um, the the video installation Qua Baron the the Baron Sandy video cross. Um, so Baron Sandi, it's uh, the guardian of the cemetery. It's a very powerful uh, spirit in Haitian Vodou. And I make uh, this video installation in 2004 uh, um, in a time where we had a lot of death in Haiti, a lot of uh, political turmoil. And um, uh, I decide to make uh, this video installation and um, once again I everything uh, will link together so I make a video across this is the spirit of Baba Sandy and this is a guardian of the cemetery and I'm making the, the link between the death with because a lot of people are dying in Haiti and we, we don't remember them. Yeah. We remember of our hero like Tessaline, Toussaint, and some kind of heroes. But the people who are, who are dying uh, 
in this year and they are dying for our liberty or for the freedom of Haitians in other ways we don't know them or only victim of the situation we forget them so this video across um sometimes we have the names and the situation of the moment in 2004 uh, where people were dying and there are some images of of dead people or um, the political turmoil um, the, the um, manifestation how do you say that uh, the, the people in the streets um, mm. um, all of this it's a memory and it's to link the, the dead people with us who are living people and the the yeah life and death <laughs> yeah yes. yeah I, I remember seeing that piece uh, um when i was looking at your website it's very very yeah powerful and, and impactful and um so for the moment uh, this video installation is on the forecast to form at the mca2 and oh, wow. MC, um for the big exhibition of the um, Caribbean diaspora. Yeah. Caribbean diaspora. How how was that work received um uh by people in Haiti? Um like, so I'm I'm just yeah, just interested in, in how folks responded and if they were if that work inspired people to have conversations about you know, loved ones who who have been lost, or just you know the the political situation in Haiti. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do you find that your work you know spurs these kind of necessary conversations? Yes, and it takes times to uh, because at the beginning people were surprised uh, <laughs> yeah. and they didn't understand how. How an artist can take uh, this uh, ritual object that is a TV to put it uh, <laughs> in another way to put off the plastic box and to make some a sculpture. Yeah. Uh, they they sometimes uh, I don't know. It's not only in Haiti, but uh, until uh, the last decade. Uh, uh until 2010 uh, it was very strange uh, for people to to make something else uh, in uh with a tv uh, that uh, then uh, not looking tv <laughs> so yeah. making art making uh, something else uh, with the 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 sculpture with the with the no with um the screen were very very strange so at the beginning um in haiti they were surprised they 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 ask and they they ask a lot of questions and um, in, in 2004 um we didn't have um internet uh, as today also so uh, the um, uh, I think in the world uh, we didn't see a lot of things uh, this kind of art also so mm. now it's more um, I give some some lessons to some um, some course uh, some special formation to some people, some artists in Haiti. So there are other artists that are doing that. Okay. Bonjour, mon chéri. <laughs> Coming from school. Yeah. 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 He's speaking uh, English. Okay. Hi, my yeah. name is Jamil. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Okay, nice to meet you too. On dit, tu as oublié? Okay, tu me laisses parler, hein? Je 
vous arrivez plus tard. <rire> oh. Yes. That's your son. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, there is a new generation in Haiti of artists and they are um, they uh, there is two artists that make uh, video art. Um, I don't, I won't say like me, but like I, I'm making, but uh, there are other video artists uh, that experiment. Uh, they're very good uh, directors, very good. Uh, but the video art, um, um, uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, artists don't see um, it's difficult to go out of the narrative story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to, yeah. to talk uh, only to, to the mind. <laughs> yeah. And not to the um, logic, um, logic mind. Yeah. That, that's one of the reasons why I think your, uh, your work is so revolutionary. Um, you know, because you have been able to to use the language of film and film editing, um, you know, yeah, and the audio visual. Oh, did I cut off for you? Oh, can you hear me? Uh, we had a. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was a little glitch. There is a problem with the connection. Yeah. Um, are we okay? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, I was just, uh, just you know, uh, expressing my admiration for your work and and how you're able to use, um, use the the techniques of film without um, without uh, being uh, beholden to that um, to that narrative structure. Um, and actually, you know, one of the things that, uh, or one of the, the figures that, um, often comes to mind when I look at your work is, um, Haile Garima. Are you familiar with his films at all? Sorry, what is the, the name? Haile Garima. He's, uh, Haile. A, yeah, um, hey, I'll put his name in the chat. Um, he directed the film Sankofa. Um, oh, no. no, I hear about it, but uh, no, I'm not familiar. Yeah. And I saw you uh, talking about it in your. Um... <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So <laughs> I was I was looking at uh, I was watching a uh, hmm. an interview that he did. Um, and he was talking about his technique uh, of of filmmaking, and one of the things he said was he wanted to uh to use the film like so two things one thing he's, he said was the to make films that felt like that he wanted to make films that felt like uh african sculptures um mm -hmm. and i and i get that sense really strongly with uh with the works of yours that i've seen but then mm -hmm. when he was talking about how he how he will coach um his film students because he's also a a teacher at howard university um is he he'll tell his students to think of the think of the camera like a gun <laughs> and the you know mm -hmm. what you're pointing the camera at is almost like you're pointing a gun at that thing mm -hmm. um and and there is this sense so yeah so there's this sense of uh the 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 exaggerated um beauty the abstraction the spirituality of african sculptures but then mm -hmm. this uh this you know this underlying sense of of violence as well that i think is mm -hmm. really uh violence and resistance um mm -hmm. yeah so just you know admiring yeah. how you're able to to use the camera in such a revolutionary way with all of these layers of like you know beauty mm -hmm. 
and um, revolutionary politics. Yeah, I'm, I'm in, in awe, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm agree with you. When I was um, 17, 18, so a lot of um, they already had uh, problems in Haiti, and we were not in this situation. And uh, some people uh, uh, and my my friends they say, "Well, I'm going into the army. I'm going to make uh, that." Uh, I think uh, uh, some people should take guns or everything. And my answer where uh, my camera will be my my gun and I, yeah. I will make a film to to make a, to change also not with guns but uh, with my camera so um, I'm totally agree with you um, but uh, to to talk about my uh, my students uh, um all oh, the people and the, the, the young uh, artists that I, I coach uh, um uh, what I always say is uh, this uh, the video art uh, I, I explain all kind of um, projects you, you you can make with films and uh, and I say video art it's total liberty you are freedom total freedom so you really make I can make explore a, a lot of um, a lot of worlds uh, with um, with a video art. Yeah, and uh, for me, uh, many years, uh, for many years, I uh, and I still think that uh, uh, this kind of art associated with uh, voodoo uh, can give uh, something uh, unique uh, and something that uh, um, that uh, we Haitian can explore um, very deeply in this uh, uh, language uh, of uh, video form um, and voodoo. This is uh, something that uh, we can explore and um, yeah, give a veritable language like our paintings, like uh, our, our sculptures, because, because uh, what the sculptors, sculptors or visual artists are making in it is very surprising and very wonderful. And um, in video, um, I think uh, we have this um, 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 ability <laughs> to make uh, uh, to go out of the the, the ways um, that is uh, uh, the classical ways. Yeah. Even if it's not voodoo explicitly yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know the ways that it's a uh, very uh, open mind uh, um, as we can make in other um, other arts yeah yeah um and uh and i i teach a, a vr class here at cc and i also you know tell my students something similar that you know, through the through virtual reality, you know, you can make pretty much anything that you want to see. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. try, to, try to focus my pedagogy on like pulling out what mm -hmm. it is they actually want to see, as opposed to like making what they expect. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Um, two more questions that I that I wanted to ask, so I'll just go through them uh, now. Um, the the first question that I wanted to ask you was um the 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 role of the body in your work um so like thinking about that uh that video piece of you um you know banging your head on the glass um but then there was another there's another work of yours 
um, you know, that's focused on on dancing and uh, into uh, cutting between figures who are wearing masks and figures who are, um, you know, doing this sort of like classical dance. Um, and thinking about, you know, what I know, the the little that I know about voodoo, um, it that some of those video works remind me of the of what I've read about like mounting, you know, spirits mounting um the the, the voodoo song. Um so I was just um wondering or or I wanted to ask you um how you how you go about um choreographing the body in in your work. Um how you came to this focus on the body through dance and through these other um through these other instances um thinking about you know love is a crime and how how the how you sort of uh cut between uh these black bodies and these uh these words that are almost scriptural um yeah um could you uh could you tell us a little bit about how yeah, how you as an artist um, view the body and the African body in particular. Um, yeah, I think um, I am um, a lover of a contemporary dance, uh, contemporary dancers and the dance and the, the dance. Uh, I uh, really appreciate the, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, no, I really love the, the contemporary um, uh, African dance too, because uh, when I live in in, in Africa, in Senegal, mm. and I move a lot uh, in other countries, in Congo, in Cote d'Ivoire, and I make a lot of collaboration with other dancers. Uh, and um, there uh, were both uh, from the beginning of what I'm doing, there were um, a collaboration with artists and uh, with dancers because I make a lot of performance video. I make a lot of video performance uh, projections with uh, um, and uh, on walls uh, or in uh, in rooms in multiple projections and um, naturally from the beginning again when I make projections with techno music uh, we collaborate with dancers uh, because when you are making uh, new, um, techno parties uh, raves uh, for eight to ten hours uh, you always um uh, it's not uh, like um, like a show uh, of one hour that has a beginning and the end and and like this and everything is choreograph with a choreography but it's uh, something in eight hours and something go inside like this and so we had all the art and all the collaboration with dancers, uh, with painters, uh, with performers, uh, with uh, sculptors. And uh, so it's naturally that uh, um, when I was in Africa, uh, that uh, I wanted to collaborate with uh, dancers. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I make um, some shows with uh, with dancers, and um, uh, I continue um, to 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 make uh, those kind of collaboration. And for me, the 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 body is very important. Uh, the dance. Uh, and the dancers and uh, they 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 are multiple messages in the in the movement uh, uh, as you you see in my work i have very few works with words with uh, talks um, so uh, 
it's uh, it's why uh, I I use a lot of the, the language of the body with the dancers in resisting. Does resisting make us man? And this as uh, another way to use the body because uh, this is a question: Does resisting make us men? Does it mean real men, like strong men? You know, so I. I put a dancer that make a very grace, grace uh, movement uh, in, um, to, to answer this question. And uh, what about uh, the, the LGBT community that uh, are fighting? Uh, are they men? There are a lot of people that don't want to be men. And, uh, and this is the question also that uh, does resisting make us human? Because um, um, so I'm I'm playing with the words, uh, but to come back to the dancers, uh, so the dancer give a message uh, with uh, his movement. In my dreams, uh, I use uh, a classical dancer that uh, a very good classical dancer, Haitian classical dancer that I that use this ambiguity do you know this is a good world <laughs> being yeah. ambiguity between between uh, men and women uh, with uh, using uh, the, the the accessory of uh, the, the classical uh, dance dancer women in usual uh, the the point what you put in the feet so um uh, I wanted to 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 use this um, ambiguity um, between the in the in the story I wanted to 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 show and um, so this is the way I uh, I use uh, the body of uh, the other. Um, uh, to to tell another story, uh, uh, sensual uh, story too. It can be sensual. It can be uh, um, use the body um, of black um, black body in another way. We used to see it also. Um, um, with the mask, it's very important for me when the take uh, and when he was with the with the mask because uh, it's uh, we uh, are playing with uh, the mythology, uh, the African mythology, and uh, the Greek mythology too, like uh, the Taurus or the. I forget the name, but uh, there is a name uh, uh, with the naked body with uh, the, the head of, um, of an animal. Um, so all, all those are mixed together to... Yeah. Yeah, so. And I use also my body. <laughs> yeah. I use my body, but I, I'm not, uh, I don't, <laughs> I'm not, uh, um, I'm not sweet <laughs> with my body <laughs> because sometimes I, uh, yeah. I really put it uh, in, um, in big, um, uh, rue d'épreuve, uh, in, uh, it's um, the performance for me is uh, something physical and uh, it's um, it's uh, a time that I'm really um, uh, going to myself and mm. it's a time I'm, I'm uh, make um, I, it's like I'm in trance. <laughs> So I make um, when I make uh, uh, the performance for, for the video. Yeah. So uh, when I this when I put 
hit my head to the glass. Uh, it's um, a very strong moment of for me uh, because I really express everything I feel in the moment, uh, and it's really, really what I think. <laughs> yeah, one year ago. Uh, even if the situation is worse now, but it was uh, my my um, psychanalytic treatment. So it was very important uh, for me to make uh, this video um, of, um, with uh, with my body, and uh, yeah. I really feel better after. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like oof, I give. Yeah, uh, started. I, I break the glass too because uh, it's the, this. Um, this I wanted to make. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah that um, that piece just like speaks uh, volumes to uh, you know for me at least like the. The double-edged sword of being a creative um person of African descent in a in a Western world, you know, that uh, you know, the using using the tools of of the oppressor to try to resist against that oppression and and the the as well as just the daily frustration of being a creative person as well. Um but uh thank you, thank you very much for for your time today. I don't want to take up all of your time. I could easily talk to you for another two hours mm, yeah. about everything we Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. we it's the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I would love to talk to you more about to... music. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I was interjecting. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, yesterday I saw your TED conversation, your TED talk too. Uh, and I think we are in the same uh the same vibration I mean the same uh, yes, uh, I really understand everything you say and um, and I and I love your definition of Afrofuturism too also thank you <laughs> thank you very much and, and I, I see your work is as you know with definitely within that conversation of Afrofuturism um mm -hmm. Perhaps mixed with a little Afro pessimism as well, but you know, powerful, revolutionary, beautiful, all of that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Maxan. Um, thank you too. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have a hope you have a good day. Um, hope you, you too. spend some time with your kids. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.